All right, so I want to talk a little bit about over-engineering in React, and this is more of an opinion article, so don't take anything I show you here with like an absolute, you know, opinion that you need to follow. This is more just like thought experimenting and just trying to understand your code better. So most of the videos I put on my channel, like don't take them too seriously. It's just me just kind of getting my thoughts out there so that you all can learn to think for yourself and know when code might be becoming overly complex, over-engineered, or if code is too simplistic and kind of brittle. So I have this application I've been kind of working on and I did a video a while back doing like an MVC approach to React components where you have a view and a controller and I separated those logic to decouple them. And the question I want to want to kind of address is that there is a header component. And if I look at the header component, it's actually pretty big. Let me kind of show you, this is like 309 lines of code, which right there, that's kind of a red flag. Like this component's a little bit too big. And if you were to look through this component, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, violations of the single responsibility principle. Like this component, although it is a header, and let me show you what the header looks like. You have a header. There's different states to this component. There's a logged in state. There is a logged out state. There's a logged in state without a role. And this whole component is kind of managing all those states, right? It says like, if it's logged in um, and you have a role, show some stuff here. If you're not, if you don't have a role, show this. If you're not logged in, show this. And then like, it has like different states with like themes because the buttons need to change. In, in terms of like trying to keep this component as simple as possible, this one is kind of violating that approach because it's doing a lot. It has a lot of different functionality and switching and ternaries to kind of show and hide content. And the question is, is like, can you split this component up into smaller modules? And if you do that, does it actually help your code become cleaner and more maintainable? Now, in this example, I would say that splitting stuff up into smaller components will probably help a little bit. But it's kind of a, a fine line between like how granular do you split stuff up? So right now, like this component has a lot of different states. Well, I guess it has two state variables, but it's also grabbing a lot of stuff from uh, a custom hook called use session and then determining all this other stuff it has like these refs um so the real question is, is like can i simplify this and when i do try to simplify it am i just over engineering so let me just go ahead and show you the refactoring that i did i'm going to reset back to the main branch here let me go ahead and check out the main branch and i'm going to show you all right so now we have a common uh, folder that has a header and inside that header we have this okay so the header has a top level let me find the header view, okay? I'm doing some like weird NBC stuff that I don't know if it's a good approach, but that's besides the point. So let's look at the header view now after my refactoring. So it's the same component. Like we check if the user is logged in. We check if the user has metadata. Um, don't worry about this user fact. This is something I am tr still trying to figure out if there's a cleaner way to do this. It just basically hides the, the menus when you click off of them. All right, so when I click on this, a menu pops up. When I click out, it closes it. That's what this header, this user effect is basically doing. But I want to show you the actual code. So if I scroll through here, I split up this component into many, many sub components. Okay. So we have like logged in links. We have logged out links, logged in section, logged out section. We have logo, menu, mobile menu, mobile menu button, theme button. I split out that huge component. That was 306 lines of code into we're at 78 now. And the idea is you should be able to read through your components and understand them kind of like you're reading a book, right? So we go through all here, we have all this noise with like Tailwind CSS. But the main thing that we care about is there's a mobile menu button. And when I read this React component name, it kind of makes sense that like, this is a component that probably only shows up in on mobile view. So if I go to mobile view over here, there you go. There's a mobile menu button. It kind of makes sense what this thing is doing. And sometimes you abstract stuff away because it's doing a lot of stuff under the hood, right? This mobile menu button um, has, different SVGs. It has a different state when you click on the button. So if you can split that out into smaller components, it makes your code easier to understand and read. I would recommend doing that. And we have a logo here. The only reason I split these things out into smaller things, or the only reason I split up that HTML code into smaller components is because I'm using like a lot of SVGs and images. But if this could be described in a single image, I probably don't need a logo component. And then we have this state, right? So if you are logged in, we're going to show in, we're going to show the logged in links. Okay. So if I click on this, you'll see that it just has a bunch of links that will display depending on what role the user has. I mean, we could probably split this up even further, maybe in the same file itself. I could say like logged in links with undefined role or logged in links with 
real role because I think the links will change if you're a teacher or a student or if you're undefined. So I have that and then I have logged out links. So if you're not logged in, like you want to show maybe a home page or pricing page. And when you're like going through your code and trying to figure out how to split this stuff and how to like refactor, there's something called the axis of change. So what that means is whenever you have code and you think that this could be a good place to split it up, you need to figure out what will dictate when this code needs to change, right? What is the axis of change? And in this case, there's business logic that says like, if you're logged in, you need to have this approach versus if you're logged out, you have this approach. So your axis of change is the logged in Boolean, right? So it makes sense to kind of split up your components on that axis of change. So it's easier for you to manage them and kind of do what you need to do with them. Um, and then we have a theme button, but the other axis of change is if you're logged in, we show a logged in section which this one has a little bit more functionality to it. Basically, we want to show um, your name. You want to show some notifications. You want to show this profile picture with the drop down. So it's a little bit more complex. And we also show like this account menu. That's the thing that drops down that I showed you. So I'm just splitting all my components up into more logical components. So like mentally, you can understand like how this thing is represented when you're looking at, it at you know, a single component up here. And then also we have the mobile menu, which again, just by reading it, it makes sense that this is probably that drop down that comes. Now, if you were to compare that to the old view where I had like 306 lines of code, I think this is cleaner. I think this makes more sense. Um, it's just easier to understand, just split stuff up into smaller components. And hopefully like if you read through the thinking and react documentation, this is kind of how they tell you to do it. If you can draw like different boxes around your different sections of your components, then that's probably a good des designation that you can create subcomponents that kind of build out that logic and functionality. Um, but yeah, I'm, I guess, I don't know what this talk was about. I wanted to kind of share with you, like when you can pinpoint that something was overly complicated and you can simplify it, splitting it up into smaller pieces like this can be useful. Now, some people might argue that this was like an over-engineering approach to a header component. And for the most part, if my header didn't have login state, if my header didn't have this need to change the view when your role is set or not, then I'd say, yeah, you probably just need a single header.tsx and call it a day. But because I have these different forms of headers and the stuff that's in the header will change depending on if you're logged in or if you're logged in as a teacher or if you're logged in as a, a student, then you need to have like a better way to structure all this. And there's probably a different axis to change I could have done instead. I could have made three headers. I could have said like a logged in header, a logged out header, a logged in as student header, a logged in as teacher header, a logged in with no role header. So I could have had like five different headers. But then at that point, you have like a bunch of duplicate logos or links that, I don't know, it's like it's hard to determine where you need to split on your axis of change. Do you want five different separate headers? Or are you trying to make one header that has a bunch of different like components or sections that swap in and swap out depending on the rules. And that's something I don't have an answer for you, right? You just need to do what works best and what makes more sense for you and your team. And if you find an approach that works, stick with that approach. If you try an approach like I'm doing and you feel like it's too complicated, then, you know, get stash, start again and try a different approach to kind of split up your component based on these axes of change. Anyway, I hope this was kind of a good overview um, just about how you can potentially clean up your code or clean up your components. If you uh, want to join me Discord, feel free to. There's a link in the description where you can ask me questions directly or talk to other people who are trying to learn how to code in JavaScript and React. And like always, have a good day and happy coding.